Um, yeah, the threat still stands for us here in Central Florida. It, um, it's now a Category 2 hurricane, by the way. Uh, we're still expecting it to cross over areas of Polk. Osceola, Brevard County. Um, so that is, of course, something that we're going to be on heightened alert Has for. Has it slowed down? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Has it slowed down? Um, I can look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm sorry, but it no, just no, seemed, no. we were just up here talking. It seems it like. It feels like a very like slow a slog. slog. I don't know if it's just our lives <laughs> right now. I mean, it's 11.57. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but. Um, and it has a very strange wind field to it. Uh, Jonathan was showing us some of these wind gusts uh, before, and it yeah. seemed like almost some of the most powerful winds are going to be on the backside after it passes us. I mean, did you see Eric Von Aiken's? Yeah. You know, that's, what right. that's what we're saying, right? The lead up wasn't so bad. It was that back end where we're getting that surge of that dry air. Mm -hmm. We're getting that, that extra push on the back side of, mm -hmm. that, of that system. Relatively dry, by the way, right? Yeah. But the, unfortunately, then that came into that, that storm surge concern. He's also yeah. in the bay area, and yeah. the curvature of the coast plays a big role as well in storm surge. Um, so it's just, you know, it's heartbreaking when you start thinking of everyone on the West Coast, yeah. but those fatalities happened well mm -hmm. before Milton even mm -hmm. got close towards That's landfall. what was so concerning mm -hmm. to me, because we're sitting here and we're doing all of those uh, warnings today. It's like, it's not even on shore right, yet. Right, right. And then you'd think, okay, we're, we're all set and done. We went through our tornado outbreak. We, we, should, be, we should be done. Yeah. Unfortunately, though, we still have a couple more layers to kind of peel back when it comes to the storm. And power outages, we can see on the screen there. <laughs> yeah. It's an issue already, and we haven't even gotten to the meat of this thing yet. Oh, I mean, how many times are we going out to reporters and you're seeing the flashes all over the place? They're like, is that lightning? You're like, it's That's definitely not lightning. Not lightning. <laughs> it's not lightning. Now, if we had lightning, that would be a concern because yeah. lightning and tropical storms would also mean tornadoes again but that is not the case again that yeah. that concern is kind of backed off a little bit so let's kind of widen out this view because I can't see uh, <laughs> 90,000 customers right now oh, in boy. Polk County uh, we're up to 38 in areas in and around Lake County yeah. 28,000 in, in uh, Orange but look at up in uh, Volusia County where Mallory was talking about already starting to see some of the uh, lights flicker in mm -hmm. there that's 28,000 uh, customers but even Ocala remember we were talking about how that wind field can really mm -hmm. whip even yeah. further out. In Marion County, we're up to 45,000. Wow. We knew it was going to be bad, and we mm -hmm. knew we were going to see a lot of uh, power outages, which is why when we, uh, Mike DeForest, he is out with those linemen, and I've never seen so many people just in one staging yeah. area just waiting, because they know at some point when this is all said and done, they're going to be needed in a lot of communities. And look where it's slicing through. It's not through just a, a lot of rural areas yeah. in, in other parts of the country. This is uh, the heart of Florida, from Tampa Bay through Sarasota mm. into areas of You just Space picture Coast. all of those giant mossy oak trees, those oh, big beautiful oak trees around Ocala falling onto those power lines. I it's mean, we just saw that video a of, a, of a tree falling on someone's yeah. car. Yeah. I think it was, but it, it was But that. even before Milton arrived, the our land. soil the was land. already saturated because yeah. we had gotten so much rain. Some of it from Helene, but mm -hmm. just some of it just as normal rain. And, and the interesting thing about Gulf storms is that they tend to bring a lot of moisture in. Mm -hmm. um, um, the problem with Helene was that areas like North Carolina saw a lot of rain oh, yeah. leading up to it, and then Helene had kind of finished off the, the, the big mudslide concern. Here in Central Florida, we had days of rain even leading up mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to the main landfalling system. All right, let's talk about those wind and wind gusts. As of right now, we're talking wind gusts up to about 66 miles per hour in Daytona Beach, 58 mile per hour winds in Kissimmee. Now, that main center right now is just south of Lake Il Lakeland, as of the latest update, uh, right now in and around Winter Haven at 79 mile per hour wind gusts. And you can see pretty much all of Central Florida feeling certainly sustained winds at about uh, 25, 40 miles per hour. You're starting to hear that howling every time the wind picks up, kind of cutting through some of those trees. You can see uh, wind gusts right now, Daytona Beach peaking at 66 miles per hour. So this is the timing. Let's first talk about the timing of the winds. That's going to be the big concern. And the swath is still going to be relatively close towards the center of, of the overall predicted uh, path. But between now and about 2 a.m., we're looking at kind of the swath of the most damaging winds in and around Milton is going to be between uh, throughout Polk County. And of course, we're already starting to see that with some of those reports from Winter Haven. Then between about 2 and 4 o'clock, we're going to continue to see this encompass a big portion of Osceola County. Some of those areas could possibly inch into southern um, Orange County as well. And finally exiting out of the Space Coast between 4 and 6 a.m. So 
what this timeline shows is that the most damaging winds, uh, the biggest threat for the, the winds um, is going to come all well before the sun even starts to rise on our Thursday morning. And again, even outside of that main red zone, tropical storm force wind gusts, which certainly can pack quite a punch, especially as we continue to add to all that rain. So let's give you a quick radar tour. There's just so much rain at this point in time. The blinking here is a flash flood warning, an emergency flash flood warning. I should say this is going to be in effect throughout the majority of the overnight hours. And then you can see there's green polygons everywhere. I know it's hard to show you here, but rather than going from spot to spot, just do understand that if you're listening to us anywhere from East Central Florida, you are under a flash flood warning. We are getting reports that there is flooding in and around many areas. Jonathan Kegas really went into depth on our river levels, Little Wakaiva is going to be really starting to see a big jump in their water levels as well. So as we zoom in here, this is when the last 30 minutes, and I've been showing you this picture for the last hour, hour and a half, and this red hasn't moved much. You can see, look, I mean, just take Okoe for instance, this last 30 minutes, we, they, this is just coming down in sheets. A blinding amount of rain right now falling into areas of Okoe, Claremont, through Orlando, Altamont Springs as well, even into the Seminole County area, also dealing with some of the heaviest of the rain. Those bright reds really depicting rainfall rates, about two to three inches of rain per hour. And we've been watching the same zone here from areas of Polk County through areas of Orange and into Seminole County has been seeing this kind of rain already for almost about two hours already. So again, the numbers are racking up fast and unfortunately it's the middle of the night. Hopefully there's nobody on the roadways, but the problem is, is that we're really not going to see how much rain and how much flooding issues we're seeing until the sun comes up uh, early tomorrow morning. One flash flood warning that we're really focusing on is in and around San Lando Springs in Seminole County near and around Altamont and Longwood. Uh, this one zone is the Little Wakaiva River. That is one that is going to be cresting and going from no flood stage to major flood stage in a very, very short amount of time. Elsewhere in Seminole County, it's the same deal. We are now trying to increase our rain in and around Volusia County through Ponce Inlet, Daytona Beach, southward through areas of Bethune Beach as well. And even up as far north as Flagler Beach, we're still dealing with just extremely heavy amounts of rain. We are seeing a bit of a lull which you guys certainly deserve it in Brevard and Osceola County after the very eventful uh, afternoon you had. But we are going to continue to see, again, the big wind event focused primarily on uh, you guys in Osceola County and Brevard. That's not to say that the wind is not going to whip elsewhere, but we're really focusing on that hurricane force wind as, of course, Milton continues to finally exit out of Central Florida by daybreak tomorrow. Standing by now is meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. He has been really kind of combing through a lot of these models. We trying to compare what our county by county impacts were yesterday and what we were putting on on clickorlando.com. And at the end of the day, these numbers are unfortunately verifying to what the forecasts have been calling for. Yeah, it's it's uh, right. Is it unfortunately on on the money uh, here? Are the current wind gusts and just got an email about saying it's not 18 miles an hour in the village. You have to remember that this is going to be an observation at the official site at the top of the hour. So again, that's why it is. We've had gusts over 60 miles an hour in the villages. So again, that's just what the actual observation is. Uh, so we are, now we have a 63 mile per hour wind gust. And again, we've been fluctuating uh, in Leesburg from about 63 to 75 miles an hour over the last couple of hours. Same for us in the Claremont, Kissimmee, Winter Haven. We're still hanging around 80 mile per hour gust. The center getting very, very close to us now as it continues to try to lift up almost paralleling I-4 over the next several hours. Uh, Candace mentioned about the law in the rain in Brevard, but check out these wind gusts again. Not a law in the wind department. So that double component there for this storm. We're talking about wind gusts in Miko and in Melbourne, about 70 miles an hour for us. Daytona Beach, where Molly was, where the signs were kind of going everywhere. We had wind gusts pushing 80 miles an hour in Daytona Beach just last hour. Now they're down to 66. So again, that's that fluctuation of whatever the official instrument is going to record at the time at the top of the hour. Here where the current or the highest gust so far again in Daytona, we were pushing 80 miles an hour. Winter Haven coming in at 73. You just saw the current wind gust there is now 79. So already increasing from that. 
as the center of Milton kind of undercut Southern Polk County right now. Sanford, we had a 63 mile per hour gust. Orlando so far, we're at 55 and Flagler at 51. Now I want to take you hour by hour. We asked a question on Facebook if anybody had any questions here and you clearly see where we're going for the rest of the afternoon and evening. We'll slow this down for you, but it's not going to be until about seven, eight o'clock as we move into tomorrow morning and really after lunch that we start to see the winds back off on a widespread scale. Still again, that's seven o'clock on Thursday. It's certainly gusty for us along the coast, but the tropical storm forest winds really start to wind down after about lunch or two o'clock into your afternoon. It's really for the next 12 or eight to 12 hours that we're going to be under the gun. The strongest winds from say uh, Kissimmee to Point Siena, Orlando, Sanford, those are going to come closer to that three o'clock to six o'clock in the morning time frame. So those are going to whip up to about 70, 80, maybe even 90 miles an hour as Milton moves out to sea, guys. All, All right, right, Jonathan. Thank you very much. We appreciate it, Jonathan. Crazy 